With all the new Frontier-style weapon moves that we've seen coming to Monster Hunter Wilds through the weapon overviews, I thought now would be a really good time to look at 7 Frontier monsters that I think should join the main series either in Wilds or its future Master Rank expansion. Let's go ahead and get into it. These are in no particular order or ranking, I just picked some out that I liked and threw them in, so let's go ahead and start off with the first one which is Barlagual. This Leviathan has a super long tongue that it uses kind of like a whip to smack hunters and prey around, as well as a sharp tail that it uses to stab at you. It can also use its tongue to extract fluid from its prey in sort of a vampiric kind of way. What's really interesting about this feature is that, depending on the prey animal, or even the hunter, that it extracts from, it can gain new attacks. If it extracts from a poison monster like an Iodrome, it can then use poison moves. If it extracts from a paralysis monster like a Gendrome, it can use paralysis attacks. Or if it attacks a non-elemental monster like a Velocidrome or even the Hunter, it can use blood attacks that reduce your weapon sharpness. The coolest feature for me personally is that if deprived of an extract, Arlegual will return to a water-based state but its attacks will turn into mostly pinning moves so that way it can try to extract from you. I've actually already seen some people on Twitter speculating that the Brain Hammer in the Wilds Hammer trailer could be from Barlagual, but the similarities aren't quite striking enough to convince me yet. However, with its unique mechanic, dope design, and the fact that it can be found in multiple environments, I would love to see this guy join Espinus as Frontier Monsters who made it to the main series. The second frontier monster that I'd like to see in Wilds is Diorekasu. Now longtime viewers of the channel will actually remember that I did a mod showcase in Iceborne where someone changed Brute Tigrix into Diorekasu, and this is because these monsters actually bear a strong resemblance to the Tigrix family. Diorekasu are mostly a grey or blue color cackling with blue electricity. They can discharge this electricity via attacks, but they can also use this electricity to magnetize pieces of ore to themselves as a sort of makeshift armor, as their bodies are relatively soft. Aside from the regular electric moves that it has, it's got other badass attacks like it can make rocks levitate, only to jump onto and smash them, raining down debris on the unfortunate hunters below. They can of course be found in areas where there are lots of ores for them to utilize, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to want to see these guys in a volcanic area in Monster Hunter Wilds. Sticking along a similar vein, my third choice is Dayuragawa. This monster also shares the Narga slash Tigrix style build seen in the quadrupedal flying wyverns. Personally, I really like the coloration of Dayuragawa, and the inspiration of the fox can be seen throughout his design. He attacks very similarly to most flying wyverns, but can also utilize cold gusts of air by swiping his claws quickly. They can also release sleep clouds from their tail after using a tail slam attack. I actually really enjoyed fighting this guy in Frontier, and seeing him in a 6th generation engine would be super cool. I think he could easily become a fan favorite. My next monster choice is Photokururu, a bird wyvern that has a mechanic that's so specific, it actually needed its own map in Frontier. Photokururu evolved to drink nectar from specific flowers which were found in its map called the Flower Field. When drinking in Nectars, the feathers on its wings change color and it gains different elemental and status attacks. It can use things like paralysis, sleep, fire, poison, defense down, and more, all depending on the nectar that it consumes during the fight. Now one thing is that he does tend to fly quite a bit, however he utilizes attacks that bring him down along the ground, so I don't think it would be quite as annoying as a first generation Rathalos flying. Photokururu is another super unique monster that I think deserves some love in the next generation of Monster Hunter games. If you guys are enjoying the content so far and you'd like to see more Monster Hunter content like builds, guides, speedruns, and much, much more, do consider subscribing to the channel, as over 90% of you watching in the last four weeks aren't subscribed. It's totally free and you can always unsubscribe if you find the content isn't to your liking. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the next monster, the fifth monster that I'd love to see come from Frontier to Wilds is Guren Zaburu, another flying wyvern. I personally really love the shark style of his design, and I actually quite enjoyed his fight. Guren Zaburu mainly commands water moves, but can also lay out a paralyzing gas and can fling spikes from his tail which embed into the ground. 
These spikes can actually work sort of like a proximity mine, being struck by lightning if a hunter gets too close. I know that this move caught me off guard more than once while fighting him. Design-wise, this is one of my favorite frontier monsters, and I would love to see how good he would look in next-generation graphics. The Pokaradon is a very unique monster, in the fact that he's designed like a walrus, which isn't really something we've seen in any of the mainline games. This guy could easily take the place of a monster like Royal Ludroth, as we've seen Ludroth plenty of times since his release, and Pokaradon also have similar smaller version monsters called Pokada. Pokaradon uses water, but can also clap their flippers together on a hunter to cause them to be stunned. I'd like to see these guys utilized over some of the more familiar monster styles that we're used to seeing, as there's really nothing else that looks like Pokaradon in the main series. Now I did say that there was no particular order, but I saved the best for last, an Elder Dragon that I'd love to see replace Kushala is Ruko Diora. This badass Elder Dragon commands the ability to magnetize ores and rocks, as well as inflicting a status on the hunter that allows Ruko Diora to push and pull the hunter magnetically. This can be inflicted through a type of dust that he releases during certain attacks, as well as when he enrages. Ruka Diora tends to keep a levitating field of magnetized debris encircling him at most times, which can be used to both keep hunters away, sort of defensively, or deal damage to those who've gotten too close or during his attacks. Ruka Diora also has a dragon breath, as well as charge attacks, your typical claw attacks, and some flying attacks as well. He would definitely be a bit more of a stretch to see come back as, again, like most frontier monsters, he's very unique and we don't really have anything like him or his abilities in the mainline series. However, I think his design is super awesome looking, his music is dope, and I think he'd really fit in well with the sort of changing weather and environments that we're set to see in Monster Hunter Wilds. So what monster from Frontier, or really any previous game, would you like to see return in Wilds? be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I really wish I could have covered more, but I did want to keep this video to a more manageable length. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, a like is a free way to help support the channel and spread this video around to other hunters. If you enjoy this Monster Hunter content and you want more like guides, sets, hidden facts, and all things Monster Hunter, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an upload. With all that being said, I want to once again thank you guys so much for watching the video. I wish you all a good day and happy hunting.